So today we are talking about insulation for your shed to house. Yes, you need to have insulation, whether you're in a cold climate or a hot climate like we are here in Texas. Remember, whenever we were first wanting to move here, there was like some things that you were saying that before we were able to move mm -hmm. into our main shed to house was a must for you. Yeah. By the way, we're Bo and Kelly. We built a shed in the woods and now we live in it with our five kids. So we have a little bit of experience. We've built two of these buildings on our property. We're in the second one right now. It's our studio that we've converted into a space that we can create films like this to help you build your own shed to house. It's our favorite space. It is our favorite space. I love it. It's quiet. No one comes and rearranges my stuff. So maybe I'll speak to the people who are like us from six years ago, right? We just sold our city house. We're moving to the country. We wanted a smaller footprint. We wanted less mortgage. We've got this building on our property and you're like, great, let's move in. And I was like, pause. <laughs> we need insulation. We need walls. We need those walls to be textured. And I honestly don't even care if the flooring's in yet, but we need to be able to heat and cool this place because we live in central Texas. She was right. I was right. It's not always that I am, but thank you for the credit. So what kind of insulation mm. did we get and what kind of insulation would we recommend yeah. uh, if we had to do it over again? You know, there are there's like the Pink Panther type of insulation, that fiberglass, mm -hmm. That's we, we considered that. There is like a blown in type of like sheep wool or something. We so cool, like very organic, uh, so fancy. We we considered that there is a thing called rock wool, like it's called safe and sound. It's uh, it's a it's a fireproof and a soundproof mm -hmm. type of insulation, perfect for the studs. You just put it right in there. The same with the Pink Panther. Yeah. Uh, we actually did use that, uh, not everywhere, but I will go over that in a moment. And then there is spray foam. So do you remember, do you want to talk about like why we chose spray foam or do you want me to do that? Yeah, I'll share why we chose it, but more specifically why we chose the way we chose spray foam. There are a lot of DIY kits and we had no experience. And when I say no experience, I mean Bo has fixed at the point before we moved here, Bo had fixed our disposal and we like almost went out to dinner to celebrate that because that was exciting They're like the garbage disposal in the kitchen in the sink. sink when we before we moved here he had also built a stool and a bench for like the work table for the power tools we would then later buy we were very very green very very inexperienced the idea of a diy spray insulation of like very Strong it's chemicals. It's just so science-based that we knew our theater degrees would not satisfy. So we decided that is not our lane. We will stay out of it. And we hired a team to install the insulation <laughs> in the house. And then we actually wound up repeating that same process here. So I remember why we went with spray foam. Oh, versus the other options. I so see what you're saying. the organic... Part of it was the, the easy one, the easy and cheap was the Pink Panther. Mm -hmm. I think that was the least insulation, like you can do the, the, the lowest R value. Lowest quality. Yeah, yeah, it was that. So we didn't want to yeah. do that. Also underneath the house is something that we'll talk about because most shed houses are raised. And so you really yeah. want to have, you have to have a moisture barrier. The organic thing was that sheep blown insulation. It's organic. It would have been super healthy and very enticing for us to try that. Very marketable. Yeah. We'd be so green. We would have such a crunchy reputation. The thing is, in Texas, nothing dies. Yeah. It, we don't get that cold weather. So we have <laughs> critters at all mm -hmm. times. Nothing goes dormant. Nothing like hibernates really. And if that is a perfect home for the organics of like the humans, it's also a perfect home for all of the critters that can find a way into your house and they live inside your, of your walls. Us and they die yeah. inside your walls. Us coming from suburbia and moving to the country, being the first generation like wannabe homesteaders, we didn't want to have to deal with that. So we didn't want to do that. <laughs> the safe and sound was a very good option. Mm -hmm. It also is still a wool. So that can still have that same mm -hmm. thing for being in, like making yeah. a home in your walls. 
Now, we did use the safe and sound rock wool insulation underneath the lofts because our kids were going to mm -hmm. be living in these lofts and it's helped Can a lot. Can you even imagine how loud it would oh be? Oh my goodness. We live directly below our 11 and 13 year old sons. Yeah. They're like not only elephants, but like elephants at a party. It really <laughs> muffles the sound a lot. I highly recommend that. Like, yeah. it, you put it in the ceiling, but underneath the loft. It's the first floor ceiling. We went with spray foam because it creates that perfect seal yeah. of your home. Basically, it kind of like waterproofs your home a little mm -hmm. bit. And so it just cre it's just perfect. I really like spray foam. Mm -hmm. You can put down the comments of that it's unhealthy. I think that if it's installed by a professional, it's going to be great. You're low risk if it's installed by a professional. Exactly. What I recommend with spray foam is closed cell spray foam. It is what is going to give you that waterproof all around your house. We did for our main house, closed cell spray foam underneath our house. So that's good. So it, it creates that water barrier there. But then we did open cell spray foam mm -hmm. everywhere else. In our studio we learned and we did closed cell spray foam everywhere and it was the mm -hmm. best decision. I love it. Yeah, I think the one concern we normally get because Apparently there's like a prescription for being crunchy when you move to a homestead, but there's a lot of concern about the off-gassing from this. My experience is that there are no studies done on the off-gassing from these. So we're kind of an experiment and I get that. One of the things that we did to offset that is we put our fans in here, we put diffusers in here, we left the doors open, the windows open, when we were not only installing it, but honestly weeks later, because we weren't living in these spaces. So we could open and close them every single day when we came out to the property in our main house. And then when we built this, we just left the windows open because it was our second building. So we didn't have to live in it while there's that initial off-gassing. I want to add a tip about insulation. Ah. I highly recommend you add that safe and sound, that soundproofing insulation <laughs> in the interior walls of your bathroom. I know exactly where you're going with this. <laughs> because the, the thing we always say is tiny houses are all fun yeah. until someone has to drop a deuce. A deuce. <laughs> And in our main house, our master bathroom <laughs> literally shares a wall. Like the toilet is right here and then there's a wall and then there's a little seating area right there. And we did not think that through and we did not have, we don't have insulation in either any of our bathrooms. Main house bathrooms. Our main yeah. house bathrooms. And so you just hear Everything. Everything. I think we just thought like, why would you ever need to insulate the interior of the house? You don't need to regulate the temperature. We, yeah, there's no air conditioning in those We bathrooms. get it now. Yeah. We get it now. But there are seven of us in our yeah. main house. One of them is just a year old. So six of us are using the bathrooms in our main house. And those are the things where I'm like, in the redo, we do that differently. Which here in our studio, this is an office space. Kelly insisted that we insulate the bathroom in here. It was a good choice. It was a good choice. <laughs> Anything else for insulation or the installation of insulation? I would say that's not the place to cheap out. There, are, You can cheap out on the flooring. You can cheap out on the fixtures. You can cheap out on even on the walls. If you want to do a plywood wall, go for it. But make sure it's well insulated because you're going to be spending a lot of money and even dealing with moisture issues later down the road yep. if you don't do this right. If you don't do it right, mold, I mean, it, just, it can get bad. Yeah, I would say even when it comes to building a shed to house, you're literally working from the foundation up. So like the earliest things that you're gonna do when you put your shed to house together, what's the foundation like? Get that right because everything's gonna land on that later. Get the right builder, that really matters. Get the right insulation because everything is gonna trickle down from these main, initial things that you do with your shed to house. It's just so important. In our next house, I would recommend, like I would, we're probably going to be doing closed cell spray foam yeah. as our insulation, even if it is a traditional larger yeah. home. And, and I might even insulate some of the bathrooms as well. <laughs> with, the, with the sound, with the yes. Sound 
Lord willing, let's do it. Now I wanna be able to give you two resources that are super important. If you're in Texas or Mississippi or some of the surrounding states and you're looking to get a shed, but you don't really know how to start and you really want some extra support, we would love to be able to help you. We are representatives of a company called United Portable Buildings. United Portable Buildings actually made this studio that I'm sitting in right now. Our main house wasn't, it needs a lot of work. It just wasn't built to the quality that United Portable Buildings builds. They are a sponsor of our Shed to House group and of this channel because they are the best. They are the best in quality and customer service. That's why we have partnered with them. And so we can be able to handhold you. We'd be able to talk about all the design stuff that you want for your dream shed to house so that you can really live that small house and big land life. Thank you for checking this one out. If you like it, hey, there's a video right up here about going over our heat and AC mm -hmm. with these mini splits. You're gonna like that one. And lastly, a thank you to all of our members over on Patreon. If you're interested in Shed the House weekly, we do an hour long Ask Me Anything session from Shed the House, from homesteading, animals, buying land. Links are down below, or you can go to patreon.com slash better together life.